Day and Dave Mason. Yeah. We're going to talk about the album and go over um, what it's all about and play some tracks here in a second. First, I'd like to bring up the president and CEO of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Greg Harris. Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming on a Monday morning. Huh? Yep. It's always a special day when we have Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees in the house, right? Yeah. I guess I should say it's always a special day at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but it's really special when we have our inductees in the house because this is their house. Yeah. And to have um, you know Steve Cropper of Booker Team, the MGs, and almost everything that came out of Stacks and many other connections through the years in the house with us, seeing the museum is terrific. Having Dave with us is terrific, and um, uh, with from traffic as well as all the great stuff that, that Dave has written um, and done on his own and collaborated with, just a special, special day for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, um, you know, why don't you join me in welcoming Steve Cropper and Dave Mason to the stage? Steve and Dave both personalized, and we're, this is a guitar that they've donated to us so that we can auction it off to support Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's education programs. Uh, to remind you, our mission is to engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll, and we do that every day in our museum. You're all learning something as you walk around the museum. You're going to learn a lot in this interview, but we bring through 50,000 school kids a year to visit the museum. 20,000 of them come and participate in our actual education programs with trained teachers. And about 10,000 of them are CMSD students from Cleveland Public Schools. We pay for the buses to bring them here. And so funds that help us do things like that are really important. That's why they've donated this guitar to us. And when the kids are here, they learn math, science, social studies. You know, imagine teaching civil rights and using rock and roll. That's what our teachers do in this museum every single day. So we're grateful that, uh, that, that Dave and um, uh, and Crop donated this guitar to us to be able to do that. So join me again in, in thanking them for the support. And also, you know, Rachel's going to come back. You're going to get the inside story of kind of a remarkable career. Careers that are still ongoing with their amazing rock and soul review. Who was at the Kent stage last night? All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, a great, great show. And Rachel, uh, come back out here. Rachel's going to be joined by one of the stars of the show, um, who was with them last night at, at, uh, at the Kent stage. And uh, Gretchen, I knew Rhodes, but I didn't know Gretchen. Gretchen Rhodes, please join us. Gretchen, come on. Gretchen obviously had been doing it for a while. 
and Steve came over and did it uh, a year ago, right? A year ago. And so that's when we sort of got together and threw this, asked him if he wanted to go out and play. <laughs> <laughs> And here we are. <laughs> and also, and, and, and Gretchen, and, um, and hell, I've been doing Dave for 50 years, and I've been sort of making time for change for me. So um, we sort of put together this rock and soul review. And it's mixed up with some of my songs, um, with a couple of um, other people's tunes, and of course, songs that Steve's written written, co-written, some great songs, Dr. Bay, and things like that. So it's a great mix and she is, she's basically the star of the show. What she has been able to prove is that they have an incredible fear. And I don't hardly trust anybody, even the family member. All right, I'll take it, thank but you. When Dave said she could sing, I took it for her. <laughs> yeah, we'll play something. She so, does. The, uh, the album is available in the Rock Hall store, and a portion of the proceeds, if you purchase it today, go to the Rock Hall Education Program. Um, so let's, I think we should just play something right off the bat. Let's jump in. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not play something? Um, which one do you want to play? Patrick, how about the, no the first one that we wrote down there? <laughs> Why don't we start now? Awesome. 
So I, I am proud of one thing, though. We played not too far from here to raise money to build this museum. Did you? At the ballpark. That was the first actual concert where all the money was going to to break the ground.
you get the opportunity to work with, with Dave Mason and Steve Crowder? Maybe slightly intimidated? Yeah, I, I can totally understand that. But these guys are so down to earth, they're amazing. You know, we're, we're, we're cultivating a, a pretty cool friendship here. I think I, I know all of their stories verbatim at this point, but... <laughs> Very incredible. I feel very lucky and blessed. So yeah, I'm so can't even tell you. That's phenomenal. <laughs> I he was right. You're a star. Thank you. Voice is beautiful. Um, now, the Joe Cocker version um, became so popular. How does it feel to write a song and, and put all your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and you have a version, and then all of a sudden someone else comes along and and loves your song that much and covers it and has that much more success with it? Right. Yeah, sure. It's more money. It's been covered by about 50 different men. Right. Bars. Right. And I think probably every bar band still plays it. Right. And it's Cocker's version. I, it, Cocker's version is the way I wish I had been able to record it. It's, that's the. I mean, it's still. That's 50 years ago. That was cut. Mm -hmm. It still sounds great. Yeah. It still sounds great. So, um, and, and uh, an exercise in simplicity is two chords. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it is. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. Well, just everybody knows the words. Everybody's I think so. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, really. And it's an all ages kind of song, too. <laughs> everybody knows that song. Time's right. Um, we're debuting songs from the new album today. It's called um, For Real, Mason Cropper Rock and Soul Review. Again, available. Uh, if you want to purchase it today, it's in the, um, the store here at the Rap Hall. Um, so, growing up, going back to the very, very beginning, who were, um, I think we'll start with you, who, who did you listen to growing up, or what made you think, yeah, that's how you do that? Really? Okay. <laughs> he was one of them. Nice. Um, but, you, you know, I mean, I, my thing is that the, when people talk about the British invasion, i.e. musically, is I always say, well, the, the British invasion is really an American story because other than um, real folk music, which you can trace back to Europe, pretty much all, I mean, all contemporary modern music comes from here, from America. And there'd be no Dave Mason, there'd be no Eric Clapton, there'd be no Rolling Stones, there'd be none of us if it wasn't for the great blues players, oh, yeah. the great gospel stuff, country stuff. So basically we just sort of learned it all from everybody that came from here and then we sold it back to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we this, the stuff that we all listen to, all comes from here. It's all American. It's all American music. Jazz, blues, gospel, country. Yeah. That's a very interesting way to look at it from somebody who was part of it. Yeah, well, yeah. it's true. Rachel was talking about growing up. So maybe <laughs> some of you have heard this. So when I was young, I looked at my mom and said, Mom, when I grow up, I want to be a musician. And she looked at me and she said, Well, son, you can't do both. <laughs> Managed to refuse to grow up. Still haven't done that. I may be old, but I ain't grow up. So, in your in your uh, your earlier days, who did you listen to? Everybody. Peggy Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Peggy Lee. Absolutely. How much is a doggy in the window? <laughs> Whatever they play on the radio. Oh, okay. And in those days. And then they throw in some orchestra stuff. They know it. Eddie Cochran, Buddy Howard. Mm -hmm. okay. Real rock and roll. So, guitar wise, I can tell you, I listened to Chet Atkins. Nice. Found out real quick I would never be a Chet Atkins. I listened to Les Paul, made the same decision. <laughs> so, I had to create my own stuff. <laughs> Is what it is, a little lame to work. How old were you when you got your first, uh, you wrote a song and somebody used your song for the first time. How old were you? 
Well, I was older than you think. I was 16, 15 years old. But how amazing. I was older when I was 14. <laughs> and it became the flip side of a number three record on Billboard Truck. Amazing. Wow. And as a teenager. <laughs> so a little song called Flea Circus. I remember how it goes, but I don't think the artist. He's not with us anymore. So. One line. What's one line? Do you have one line for us? Baby, here I am. I'm a man on the scene. Oh. <laughs> I have to tell the story. Of it. So I'm writing a song with Otis Redding, and he wanted to put horns on it. He says I need it. <laughs> that was his sound for a saxophone. I said Otis, there's a hit right there. So we wrote a song that night called Bad. Yeah. I've been singing these sad, sad songs. <laughs> and all he was doing was giving me the sound of a saxophone. <laughs> Easy enough to do. And how about you, Gretchen? How did you get? You got the classic one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how old were you when you realized, yeah, I think I can sing? Forever ago, I think. I sang in front of hundreds of people when I was seven. So, you know, yeah, yeah, since then. Uh, Steve, now you go around sitting on the dock of the bay, which I think uh, yeah. made it your anniversary, right? And yeah, and what do you, I mean, it's, it's one of the best songs ever. Yeah, um, 50 years old. What was it like working with Otis, and how did, how did that collaboration happen? I would imagine you had to have really good chemistry to come up with something like that. Well, uh, by accident. The reason I say that, he was driving the car with Johnny Jenkins, and Johnny was being brought to Memphis to see if he could cut a follow up to Love Twist, which was, I don't know, if the number one or not, and they couldn't come up with a follow up. So they thought they would bring him to Memphis, because we were known for instrumental. We had several in the past. And that big, tall, six foot three, four guy was driving the guy that I got out of the car and started bringing the equipment in. That's how we met. And how do you think Otis would feel, um, well, sitting on the Dr. Bay once number one after he had already passed? Well, you know, he didn't hear that record finished. I was working on it when he left. And uh, I do get asked, though, where would Otis be today if he's still alive? I said, I don't know if he'd still be king of soul. And, uh, you know, as you know, we lost the queen. How do you think he would have felt uh, being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Sort of like me, a little overwhelmed. Yeah. Very incredible guy, very gentle, and very good. Yeah. I wonder if there are any old recordings laying around. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do another song from the album. Is that good, Patrick? All right. Um, again, the name of the album is Four Real Basic Proper Rock and Soul Review. Thank you. I just play it when something's wrong with my baby featuring. So you can really hear this girl sing.
say throughout several shows, or how did this, how did that process go with this album? Uh, it was um, we went to rehearse um, at a friend of a friend of mine um, had a, a large farm in uh, Jefferson, North Carolina. All right. And they, actually, he built a uh, built himself a little western town. <laughs> the recreation of an old saloon, uh, dance hall. And uh, so we went there for a week to rehearse, and then we had a private show, and all this, this is all from that one show. Cut live at Saloon Studios, right? Saloon Studios um, in West Jefferson, North Carolina. Yeah, a little story on the CD, actually. So yeah, it's all cut just from one show. There's no overdubs, it's, it's, that's, that's my band. And um, it's pretty damn good. It's so real deal, yeah. It's I was, that's why I thought it for real. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I gave it that title. Um, and yeah, it's it's a uh, and it's a great show. It's it's for me. It's like I said, it's a lot of fun. I've I've been doing Dave for 50 years, you know, so it's nice to be able to mix it up and do something else. Do you ever get tired of, of being on the road? But the wear and the tear well, on the body. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously traveling is a little bit um, more wearing, but I've never a plane. Mm -hmm. No. I, that's, what we, that's what I do. Well, let me interject. Sometimes you're tired when you travel, but you don't get tired traveling. That's well, true. I don't get tired playing, so that's the thing. Yeah. Now, you were inducted into the Rock Hall in 2004. Yes. With traffic, with traffic. I'm a member of traffic. How did how did you hear the news that you were going to be inducted, and what was your reaction like? Um, I forget exactly. I mean, I forget exactly how I know. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, um, but you know, like anybody, just, um, a great moment, um, and uh, it was. I, I mean, it was. Um, the actual evening was great. It was that was a great lineup. Mm -hmm. There was Traffic Prince, uh, Jackson Brown. That was here. That was here. Uh, the Renaissance. Yeah. ZZ Top. Mm -hmm. and, Jackson, uh, Jackson Five. Bob Seger. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, again, the the fifties people. I forget what the name, but um, it was a great lineup. And I, what was great about it is I got to do um, I got to do Feeling Alright with with a with a backup band of um, <laughs> Keith Richard, Tom Petty, uh, Wimwood, everybody. So it was kind of interesting. That is a phenomenal performance. <laughs> uh, go to YouTube as a side note and just Google his performance at the Rock Hall uh, induction ceremony, 2004. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, when when Dave Matthews was introducing you guys that night, he said that Traffic he feels is an underrated band. Right. What do you think? Well, I'm sure we were. I mean, we were probably we were probably one of the original alternate bands. Mm -hmm. You know, because we we drew from uh, we had a mix of everything in our music: jazz, blues. Country, more pop stuff. Um, so we were a mix of a lot of stuff. In there. We were we were just experimenting, basically. So maybe did he mean it didn't catch on? Maybe as much as it should have at that time? Or? Well, it started. I mean, I, I mean, for me, I'm I I have more of a pop sensibility. So um, I wrote my the first song I ever wrote. Was, was a little sort of nursery rhyme thing called All In My Shoe, mm -hmm. which was the number two record in Europe yeah. and England. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Feeling All Right and stuff like that. But, <clears throat> but uh, no, I mean, we were, it was, it, was a, it was a great mix of stuff. Unfortunately, it was a mix of stuff that, 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 that some, I, 
eventually kind of drove us apart. But yeah, but had some of the success in, 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 yeah, in the region. I picked up and came here. Oh, well, glad you did. I am too. <laughs> Um, so the new album available again uh, in the Rock Hall store for real, Mason Cropper Rock and Soul Review. I think we should do another one. If you wish. <laughs> Which one did we decide earlier? You we had our little album. Uh, you know, I don't know. You want to do Midnight Owl? We can do that, yeah. I get to sing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I can't say I'm singing as good as the original, but it sure is fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you agree? Whatever. I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, and, and this, is, this is for both of you because you have worked with so many musicians. They come back to you. Why do you think that is? Uh, you know, you do what you are called upon to do, basically. And you just do your best at what you do. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel we lucky. I, you know, in the right place at the right time, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I played with a number of people on a number of hidden different records mm -hmm. <laughs> that were out there. So, yeah. It's been a wild ride. Yeah, it's great. Not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> and are you thinking of retirement or is that just way... Retire? Did <laughs> <laughs> you want? But, but I have to pay the tribute to the people out there. Without you guys, we wouldn't be sitting up here. Right, and it wouldn't give people like me a job. A lot of work. Goes, comes full circle, yeah. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us this afternoon at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Again, the album is available in the Rock Hall store. For real, Macy Proper Rock and Soul Review. And since they're both Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, um, check out the gallery on the third floor. Their signatures are up there. They're featured uh, in several places all around the Rock Hall. Uh, so thank you. Dave Mason. Thank you. Steve Trapper.